That's great. She will be for six months with us, working mostly with the San Rosy, but also collaboration with Stolen myself on transport phenomena in the ocean related to the marine protected areas. Okay, so we have another postdoc with us. His name is uh, San Jong Juan. He comes from the Korean University and uh, he's sitting in the SO5 office. He worked for the Beach Project, Transport and uh, Information Project. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the role of non-locality in the formation of localized structures in spatial standard systems. And uh, this work has been done together with Manuel Matias, Damia, and Damia Gomiwa here at the FISC, and also Wender Jevens and uh, Tom Donison at the Applied Physics Research Group in the British University of Rome. <laughs> okay, so the, the outline of the talk is, uh, is the form. I will give initially some introductory remarks on non locality. I'll be doing a little bit different systems in which it appears. Then I will discuss, uh, all this part is going to be basically introductory. I will discuss a little bit on how forms move, uh, fronts connecting homogeneous states move in special extended systems, interaction of fronts, uh, and, and then uh, I will move on uh, towards stability of uh, homogeneous solutions in standard systems. And here I will introduce spatial dynamics, which uh, some of you, you might not be familiar. Uh, and they will take advantage of uh, spatial dynamics to determine the f shape of the profiles, the shape of the profile of the fronts connecting different steady states. And finally, I will use that to determine the effect of no locality. Okay, so basically this is going to be a sort of introductory part. And all the results that I'm going to talk have been published in these two papers, which are uh, part one and part two of a long work uh, that appeared this, uh, at the beginning of this year in, in physical review. And of, there is more content there that I can explain here in this talk, but I will try to basically summarize. <laughs> I may put some exercises on the blackboard. <laughs> okay, so this is not, by, by no means, does not pretend to be exhaustive, but there is a lot of reference anyway. Uh, on different systems that people claim that there is non locality in the interaction. So there is many systems that you can describe with coping between the elements mediated just to the next neighbors or the next neighbors. There is other ones which are described by global coping, and there is systems in which you have interaction which is not just local, which extends over a certain distance in the space, but is not all too long. In chemical reactions, it has been introduced in, in the reaction diffusion systems and by, by in all these articles at least. And then in biological and ecological systems, well, uh, even in the book of Murray there is some, uh, some comments on that, on, uh, on the role of non-locality. Uh, Emilio and Cristobo have been working on the role of non-locality, and uh, recently, in January, we had a talk by Ricardo on this topic, in, uh, in, uh, on, uh, on, a pattern, on uh, vegetation, on the formation of, of patterns in vegetation and involving non-local interaction. Other, other groups have also been working on this topic. In neuroscience, uh, when you describe in terms of columnar uh, the, the interaction between different columnar regions, uh, regions in the cortex or the, some uh, patterns, uh, association patterns that uh, are also described in these in this systems, people claim that the interaction is also non-local. And in physics, in physics uh, we have several systems in which uh, you can have non-local interactions. 
uh, in some cases for the condensates, transport of heat of particles, liquid crystals, no linear optical systems, and here there are just a few references on those systems. Excuse me. Yes. Locality is here meant in terms of Euclidean space. I'm thinking social interactions to internet are local or non local? Okay. All that I'm going to talk is Euclidean space distance. Okay? I'm sure some context can be extended to other systems. The techniques that I'm going to use are only valid in Euclidean space distance with one spatial dimension. Now, uh, there are several mechanisms that can give rise to an effective non-local interaction. Or, uh, one of them is that indeed you have some sort of long-range interaction, like dipolar interactions in some systems, for instance. Another mechanism which arises in many systems is when you adiabatically eliminate one of the variables. For instance, in reaction diffusion systems, if you have a variable that just diffuses and decays, but acts as a mediator for the interaction of other variables, when you eliminate that variable, you might get a coping which is non work because it's the spread of that variable that diffuses before decay. In nonlinear optical systems, for example, in, quadratic, in quadratic media, you have first a second harmonic generation, you have a fundamental frequency and a second harmonic frequency propagating in a nonlinear non crystal, you can eliminate adiabatically the second harmonic uh, field and then you get an effective equation for the fundamental harmonic, which is non-local. Which is basically is the risk of what, that is like the fundamental cis, uh, crystal, which is non-local because it's the interaction with the second harmonic that has spread meanwhile, and of course it involves a larger volume in the space. Okay, those are uh, uh, different uh, schemes that can appear. Others can also be present, for example, in vegetation, there are other arguments to have no work of uh, interactions and so on. So, excuse me, yes. so the concept that you are talking here about non-locality is like uh, non-Markovian, that depends on the variables that you use to describe the phenomenon, or is something intrinsic? It depends on the variables you use to describe the phenomenon. So it, you can make it local by extending the number of variables? I don't know if you can do it always. What I do know is that in many instances, if you, in, if you eliminate variables, you get a non-local equation, which is because the variable that has been eliminated is spread in a space before uh, I mean, interacting with the other things. Okay? I'm not sure the other way can be proven. Typically, you can make it local by extending the number of variables. <coughs> In those cases, yes. The point is that you don't want to do it. You want to study this system. I mean, if not, you get a more involved system, a system with more variables or more complex. And in some cases, it might not be like that. For instance, if you have the system that Roberta was studying of uh, uh, liquid, uh, liquid light bulb with a bunch of optical fibers, which you feed back and they are uh, displace it in space, you couple this point with that other one, there is no way you can introduce a new variable that you eliminate the space there, because the, the, whatever is the output at, at a given point in a space is fit to another one. That will give a non-local interaction in this. So, so uh, let me continue. So, to focus the ideas, I'm going to consider only one is dimension in space. So I'm going to consider a dynamical system that has one dimension in space, X, and it has one single real variable. Okay? Which I will going to call it A. Furthermore, I'm going to require that it fulfills this form, where here, here they have several spatial derivatives, but all the spatial derivatives that they have here are of even number order, sorry, of even order. So, basically, G is symmetric under the transformation X to minus X. Okay? 
As an example, the Gisborg and Dower question, the real Gisborg and Dower question, an example will be the first question of the question. Okay, all those systems fulfill this criteria, and many others. And uh, this is the original system. And my interest will be what happens with this system when you add a non local co printer. How the dynamics is affected by this non local co printer. Okay, in particular, how the front shape is going to be. So let's be, uh, let's go step by step. So the first thing is that we have this dynamical system and one determines the steady states. Okay? The homogeneous steady states. This is easy. You set the spatial derivative, the temporal derivative equal to zero, and the spatial derivative also equal to zero because I'm looking for homogeneous solutions, and you find the solution. In the case of the Ginsburg Landau, for negative values of the parameter mu, you have one single steady state, which is AS equal zero, which is a stable, and if mu is positive, you have three steady states, AS equal zero, which is unstable, and uh, AS equal plus minus the square root of mu, which are what the state. And for those that follow the course of dynamical systems, from here to here you have a bit for my formation. Now, uh, we, have, we have several coexisting homogeneous states. In the case of the Ginsburg Landau, we have two. <coughs> For mu positive, a stable, and one unstable. So we can have fronts connecting one homogeneous state with the other one. Okay? For instance, here I'm showing a, a plot of a front connecting two stable homogeneous steady states in the Gibbs and Dow, and one connecting the stable homogeneous state with the unstable one. Okay? All those fronts are monotonic. So, they decay uniformly, they do not have any oscillation. The Gisburg and Dauer equation, all the forms in the Gisburg and Dauer equation, the real Gisburg and Dauer equation, are monotonic always. You. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what happens here. Uh, well, they supposed to be here. The front profile for the Sweet Hawking equation. Uh, you may have a, a, a blank square on top of it. I don't is the noise here? Uh, anyway, I would prefer to draw it here. So basically, for the for the Sweet Hockenberg equation, you have a front which has oscillatory. Now, all these fronts are for singles of one variable. If you had more than one variable, there are other possibilities. Okay, I'm not going to consider in this talk more than one variable, but just for completeness, I would like to mention that if you have more than one variable and you have a front connecting two equivalent states, like it is in this case, but for two variables, then there are two possibilities. Either the front is symmetric, and in that case we say that we have an easing front, for instance, this one, okay, so here I'm putting a system with two variables, in fact it's a complex variable which has two real and imaginary parts, and putting the, the real and imaginary part as a function of x, and this is the real and the other piece of imaginary, the front is symmetrical, and that's a missing front. But in those systems you can also have a block front which is non-symmetrical, like this one, connecting the two exponential homogeneous systems. We are not going to consider block fronts in this talk, because I'm only going to consider one single variable, and in one, for one single variable, all the fronts are either of this form or of this form. And now we see that. If the two states are equivalent. You can also have fronts connecting non-equivalent states. Okay? Like well, this one and others that I'm going to study now here. So what happens if you let the, the time evolve? If you have a front connecting two non-equivalent states and you let the time evolve, the more stable a state invades the other one. So you have a stable a front connecting a stable state and an unstable one, the front will move so that the stable state invades the unstable one. And if you have 
an stable state and a metastable one, and this for instance is more stable, so this is more stable than this, then this one moves in this direction. Okay? Just a technical note, for those who know, just consider this note, for those that don't understand what I'm saying, just forget it. If the system is variational, you can determine which is the stabi relative stability of the two states. Of course, and then it's easy. And in fact, for one dimensional system, you can always, uh, in many states, you can do that. Here, here, this system is obtained with a potential that is uh, uh, non-symmetric, and this is more stable than this one. Okay? Okay, forget that, that finish the note. Now, if you have two equivalent homogeneous steady states, if you have two equivalent homogeneous steady states, like the case of the Ginsburg and our question, then the forms do not move. Okay? In one, for one value. If you had more than one variable and you had those both forms which were asymmetric, those forms have chirality, and the chirality makes the form move even if the form connects to two equivalent states. Okay? And the direction of the, of the movement depends on the chirality. So the, for the one that has a given chirality moves to one direction and the other one moves to another. But I'm not going to consider, again, this first here. This is just for completitude in the overall uh, picture. Okay? So, for a reference, you can see, for instance, the, the, the article, original article of Yves Pomo, or you can see the book by the new result. Um, now, what happens if you have more than one form? Okay? Here, then, I, just, I have just import one form, and this system goes to infinity in this direction and to infinity in this direction. Uh, infinite does not exist in, 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 the, in the practice, neither in the lab, neither in the computers. Uh, uh, so, if you have a finite system and you have, for instance, periodic boundary conditions, you end up having usually a situation where you have a given state here and maybe on the top part the other value, and now you have two forms, sort of kink and anti kink, connecting this state with this other one and this with this. Okay? And this state and this other one might be equivalent, but now the separation between the fronts in this direction or in this other direction is not equivalent. So in this case, what happens is that the fronts interact. And they interact very weakly. The strength of interaction uh, decays uh, with the exponentially with the distance, but nevertheless they do interact. If the fronts are monotonic, the interaction is positive, the two fronts approach each other and they finally annihilate. it. So this is the initial time, they approach, they touch, and finally they will, be, they will become smaller and finally will disappear and you get one single homogeneous state. This regime is also coarsening in the case uh, you have a given structure or whatever, or more, uh, finally you get one single homogeneous state. Now, if the fronts have oscillatory tails, I understand what is happening here uh, with the figures, well, if the fronts have oscillatory tails, then the dependence with the distance has this form. There is an exponential decay and then there is no oscillatory term here, okay? And that means that when this term vanishes, the force, the attracting force is zero and the force walk. And the force can walk at many positions because this can vanish at many multiples of the wavelength, which is basically the inverse of B, okay? So basically the fronts can work at different distances and all that give localized structure. And those structures are, do not move. They are localized because they have a, a given size, could be a small or big, visible to the other one, and they remain like that and they do not move. Uh, there is also the possibility that there are several of these fronts, if you have a system with many of them, that work 
and you can have any arbitrary configuration, and this gives rise to the concept of a special chaos, spatial chaos, which was introduced by uh, Pierre Coet in this uh, physical review letters, and this, is, this should be a longer picture, but you get the idea here, so there are several fronts connecting the two states, and they work together with the oscillations of the tail, and you can have any arbitrary structure with ups and downs in an arbitrary way. Okay? Uh, again, the objective of this talk at the end will be the study of the influence of the non-local on the non-local terms in the shape of the fronts. So, how a front that is monotonic and then no localized structures can exist can be transformed into a front that has oscillatory tails and therefore I can have localized structures thanks to the non-local. Okay? And a disclaimer. There are other ways in which localized structures can appear. This is just one of them. One way is the one that I'm saying. Fronts connecting two homogeneous states that have oscillatory tails. But localized structures can also appear when you have a pattern that is subcritical and consists with an homogeneous state. And can also appear because of no linear effect of curvature in two dimensions. Okay? And I am not going to discuss all that, just to say that I'm going to consider these effects, the, 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 the local structure arising from front profile. Okay, so now let's go to the uh, system that I'm going to consider. Again, my dynamical system in one dimension, which even ordered the spatial derivative. And I add a non local term. The non local term, to be more specific, I'm going to add, it has this form. It has a kernel, which, deter which a given size, sigma is going to be a parameter that determines the typical size of the kernel. Okay? And it couples basically all the values of the field at different locations. And I add this term here with m0 is the average of the kernel, because in this way, I am subtract, I'm subtracting all the local contributions of the non-local kernel. Okay? So, this part has no local contribution. This means that the steady states of the original system are the same steady states of the new system. I am not touching them. I'm just introducing poor non-local. Okay? Uh, and I take an arbitrary parameter S, which is going to be the strength of this no workout term. Okay? To, con to, con to control the overall strength. Now, this is the Gizmo Wandao equation I have before in green and the no workout terms in red. And in principle, this kernel could be arbitrary. Later on, I'm going to consider two particular kernels. Okay? Now, the first thing that you could do is uh, you could do you so, so, so always linear. linear however many of the, in many cases the non-locality is non-linear for instance in optical systems the non-locality is non-linear that means that what I'm going to do now do not apply directly straightforward to that but many of the ideas do apply because what I'm going to do just not now a little bit after that, it's going to do linearize around a steady state. And once you linearize, you are going to obtain a linear thing. So that, that's the point. Okay? But what I'm going to do now, which is these two things do not apply if the kernel were no linear. Of course. Here there will be a to the square of whatever. So the first thing is that you can go to Fourier space and write the kernel in this form, uh, in Fourier space, and then in Fourier space, the non local term is just the product of the kernel by the field. And the second thing that, that one can consider is one can do a moment expansion of the kernel, okay? And by doing a moment expansion of the kernel, what you do is what Maxi wanted to do, which is introduce new variables to avoid the non locality in a, in a different way. When you do the moment, you do the moment expansion, okay, then you have this form and this if you do the in Fourier space, this in, in real space means that f can be written in this form, where these terms mj are the moment of the kernel. So basically, you get a PD with higher order spatial derivative. 
If you repair it, the kind of special will be required. Additional variables, you are in what you have. But, if the kernel, <laughs> if the kernel has a singularity in the complex plane, you cannot do a moment expansion. You have to do a warning. A warning expansion. Okay? And that's it. No work. For instance. Okay? So. Now, but, but you said that due to the non locality, you will be able to lock to. Yes. But for that, you only need the fourth order derivative. You don't need the full non locality. Yeah. But uh, that's true. I mean, to have to have so the, the effect that they are going to get, you can still get it locally. At the end, I'm going. To, well, I don't know what we're going to get, but I'm going to show you that 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 what they can get. It is true that that many of the systems that you can get, you can get it by adding additional delivery. Okay, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in saying what is the effect of the non-locality itself. I mean, if you tell me what is the minimum ingredient to have an oscillatory tail, the switch host can be replaced. And see, stop, you only want that, you have it. Okay? But that's not the point. I'm not asking what are the minimum ingredients uh, to obtain an oscillatory form. I'm asking what is the effect of non local coupling in a given dy dynamical system. So, uh, now let's consider the form. We have an homogeneous steady state, and I'm going to do a linear testability analysis. Uh, I'm going to do a linear testability analysis of the homogeneous solution, and first I'm going to do the typical linear testability analysis. So you you, you take the homogeneous solution, which is this one, okay, and you perturb it with something which depends on time and with a given perturbation in space, modulated with a given wave number k. And you allow all the perturbations to be possible. So you plug this into the equation and you obtain a dispersion relation. Okay? The dispersion relation that you are going to obtain for this non-local system is going to be the one that you had for the original system plus this term here, which comes from the non-local. Now, for the Gizmo one down, for instance, the dispersion relation is a parabola in K, and then you have the term coming from the non-local. And I have written here this new prime which is mu minus 3 as to the square, which is a short, short notation, a compact notation, so that this basically is, a, is valid for any uh, steady state. This, this analysis is going to be valid for the zero steady state or for the non-zero steady state. It's just what, what matters is the value of mu prime. Later. Uh, later on, most of the results, of course, are going to consider the one for the non-zero steady states, because of the one where there is fronts connecting two of them, and both of them are stable. In principle, tails could also exist in the zero steady state in, for some parameter regions. When you apply the uh, Now, the field is real, and we still have this x minus x symmetry in the overall equation, which basically means that the Gamma G, and in fact the whole gamma, is real and it has this symmetry. Okay? So gamma of K is equal to gamma of minus K, and in fact the same applies to, the, to this, and so basically the overall gamma has this symmetry. So I can write the dispersion relation in terms of U. U is a very helpful variable, which is basically K squared. And in terms of U, the, this will be the case of the dispersion of the Gizmo one now. Now, the homogeneous state state becomes unstable if for any value of k, the dispersion relation is positive. Okay? Because that means that perturbation at that wave number will grow. And therefore, the unstable state state is going to be unstable to perturbation of that wave number. Incidentally, does that not mean that at the very end you have a pattern with that wave number? The pattern that will initially grow is that with that wave number. 
but will happen at the very end depends on the dynamics. Okay? So, have to be the given case, the pattern will go at that case, but then other things can happen. Depends on the anyway, so the necessary conditions for tenistability is that basically gamma, gamma k, here there should be a prime, I apologize, gamma k uh, has a double zero, meaning that the derivative of gamma k is zero and gamma k is zero. Okay? That is a, uh, that is a maximum of gamma k crossing zero. So, uh, this is necessary because the derivative of gamma k of gamma equal to zero is an extreme of gamma, not a maximum. Okay? For instability, it has to be a maximum. And not only a maximum, it has to be the goal of maximum to see how instability. If not, the original state is already in the state of before. So, but this is the condition for an extrema of the, of the dispersion relation to cross z. Turns out to be the maxima is the history. This extreme of gamma k of k crossing zero could happen for k, this is gamma of k, k, this could happen for k equals zero, then what you have is an homogeneous instability because the perturbations that grow become more stable are the ones that k equals zero. This typically will lead to another homogeneous state. And it could also happen for k different from zero. And then you have a Turing or modulation of instability. And due to the symmetry, it occurs at two pairs of k, plus k and minus k, because the dispersion relation is symmetric k minus k. It is very useful to use to look at this in terms of u. Gamma prime of k is basically 2k gamma prime of u, and what this means is that the homogeneous instabilities, the ones at k equals zero, are not double zeros of gamma prime of u, of gamma of u. While the modulation of instabilities, the ones that take, take place at k different from zero, are those that satisfy that gamma of u and gamma prime of u is zero. So if you look at gamma of u, you directly get the double zero of that, the presence where the, the gamma of u and gamma prime of u vanishes, signals explicitly a modulation of instability. And this regards the homogeneous instability. Okay? So you want to separate modulation instabilities from uh, homogeneous instabilities, just look at this. Uh, for the Gibbs Bull Landau, for mu negative, the only solution is AS equal to zero. Uh, AS, as you, as you keep increasing mu, gets an homogeneous instability at mu equals zero, and then the two new states appear. The two new states, that uh, plus minus square root of mu, are never too unstable. It's pretty boring. Okay? No homogeneous instability is boring. Now, let me introduce the concept of spatial dynamics. Ideas. I'm going to analyze what is the stationary profile of this system. And to do that, I put the spatial derivative, the temporal derivative equal to zero, and I preserve, I keep all the, temp all the spatial derivatives. So I get a dynamical system of this form. This is a particular dynamical system. It is not the typical dynamical system in which we has time and a variable that depends on time. Here you have space and a variable that depends on the space. Okay? You might think that the space and time are the same, but sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay? So it has some peculiarities. But to write as a form that I usually write when I teach dynamical systems, I write everything in terms of first order derivative. So here's what I'm doing. I'm introducing uh, these auxiliary variables B sub i, and you can write it in this form. So a prime equal to b1, b prime 1 equal to b2, and so on. Okay? And finally, you get this. This is an even, this is an even dimensional reversible dynamical system. A, dyna a reversible dynamical system, okay, is the one that if you reverse the time and reverse the velocities, okay, you obtain the same. Okay? So, B1 would be a velocity, B3 would be a velocity, and you see a view 
reverse the, the space and reverse the uh, odd bees, you get the same system. So it's a reversible dynamic system. Uh, the fixed points of this dynamical system are solutions that do not depend on x, in the same way that in a typical dynamical system, the fixed points are those steady states which do not depend on time. Okay? So the fixed point of this dynamical system are precisely the homogeneous solutions. Homogeneous steady state. Now, the shape of the profile, when it approaches to the homogeneous steady state, who can be determined linearizing around the homogeneous steady state. Okay? The way the one approaches the steady state can be obtained by linearization. So to do that, you write that the profile of the front is basically the stationary steady state plus a perturbation. And you work this into the dynamic system and linearize. And it's very similar to the temporal stability analysis, but if you look at what I have done in, 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 for temporal stability analysis, here they have e to the ikx, and here they have e to the lambda x. So I'm going to obtain exactly the same, but where there was k, I have to put minus i lambda. Okay? With lambda complex. So I replace k here for i lambda, lambda b complex. Okay. So I get the dispersion relation, which is the same than the, than the temporal stability analysis, and from that uh, dispersion relation, I can get spatial eigenvalues, which is when the dispersion relation is equal to zero. The dispersion relation is exactly the same that for the temporal stability analysis, but with an argument minus i one. It's the same equivalent to If you like. Again, you can introduce u, which was the square of k, okay, so it's minus lambda square, uh, and look at the zeros of the dispersion relation in terms of u. Now, the zeros of, of uh, gamma of u tell you the spatial eigenvalues, and you have the following possible situations. u zero, Remember u equal to k squared, or in this case minus lambda squared. u zero is real. This means that you have a pair of spatial eigenvalues which are given by lambda zero plus minus square root of minus u sub zero. If u sub zero is real, lambda the, spa the spatial eigenvalues are imaginary. So if u sub is real and positive. If u sub zero is negative, the a spatial eigenvalues are uh, real. The other possibility is that u sub zero, the zero of gamma, is complex. But since gamma is real, if u sub zero is a complex zero, u conjugate zero conjugate is also a zero. Then there are four eigenvalues, which corresponds to the plus minus the square root of u sub zero and the square root of u sub zero conjugate. Okay? And this I have this form. Okay? This is a quarter of the spatial eigenvalues. So, to summarize, when you do this spatial stability analysis in, this, in, in the spatial uh, dynamics in the system, when you approach the homogeneous state, the fronts that approach, the eigenvalues, the profile that they have here, is given by lambdas that appear either in pairs, which are a pair of real of real do, a do, uh, two real numbers, of a pair of two imaginary numbers, or in complex quartets, and cannot appear in any other form. Okay, due to the symmetries. Now, typically, you might have many spatial eigenvalues depends on the order of the system, and when you include non-locality, non this could be of very, I mean, if you think on the expansion, it could be a two. You could have infinite numbers of spatial eigenvalues. All of them determine the front profile. However, the ones that dominate the behavior of the front, 
Finally, when it approaches the homogeneous state, are those that have the real part with a smaller bound. Okay? Those are the leading spatial eigenbounds. And those are the ones that determine if the front has one shape or another one. So, the profile of the front is going, the front is going to be given by the leading spatial eigenbound. The ones that have the smaller real part. And there are three possibilities. That the leading spatial eigenvalues are a real dog one. Okay? Lambda zero plus minus Q zero. Then the fronts approach the homogeneous st state as e to the Q zero X. This is a real number. And that decays monotonous. Okay? Fronts are monotonous. So, if you have done all this stability analysis and you determine the eigenvalues are real, you have monotonic fronts. If the fronts, if it happens that the leading eigenvalues, the ones that the small real part, are a complex quarter, then fronts should have oscillatory terms. And the third possibility is that if the leading eigenvalues are an imaginary double, meaning that you have two eigenvalues which has value plus minus i k, k, then what happens is that if you remember the connection between the spatial and the temporal dispersion relation, if this is fulfilled for a lambda which is purely imaginary, means that for the dispersion relation in the temporal domain, there is a value gamma of k0 which is 0. Okay? Which means that Gamma of k, the temporal one, is positive either for k larger than zero or for k smaller than zero, for one of them. No matter what happens, that means that at some, for some values of k, the dispersion relation is going to be positive and therefore the homogeneous state is unstable. So if the leading spatial dynamics is an imaginary double, the homogeneous steady state is unstable to temporal perturbation. It will grow and disappear. Okay? So, this is the three possible situations that one might encounter. Good. Let me put an example. The Gilfo van der equation with the Gaussian kernel. Okay? Gaussian kernels have been used in ecology, reaction diffusion systems, neuroscience, and other systems. Uh, I'm going to write the kernel in, normalize it in this form, and this is the kernel in Fourier, in Fourier space. Okay? It is normalized like that M0, the, the moment, the, the average, the moment, first moment of the kernel is, is 1. Uh, so, you write down the dispersion relation, is this 1? And now you evaluate the spatial eigenvalues, just put gamma equal to 0. And this is the solution, where this W is the lambda function, which also appears in the array systems, okay? And I just, if you want to know more, I just, you can just look at the talk that Thomas John Green gave on, this, on December 2013, that he uh, gave some comments on, on the, this uh, Lambert function. In particular, what I like to say is that the Lambert function has many, many uh, branches. Two of those branches are real, okay? which is the branch W0 and the branch W1, okay? The branch W1 only exists for argument of the lambda function between 0 and minus 1, sorry, this is minus 1 over A, while the branch W0 starts here at minus 1 over A and continues plus 2 infinity, okay? And there are many other branches we have to imagine. But I'm going to concentrate on the real branches, okay? Now, this is the vocation of the leading spatial eigenvalues in parameter space. So this, I can fix it, the value sigma, which is the width of the kernel to 2. And in this axis I have S, which is the strength of the non-locality. And in this axis I have mu prime, which is basically the parameter that determines the, the local dynamics. Okay? It's mu minus 
This line over here is basically the Ginsburg Landau where uh, or the local Ginsburg Landau where S is equal to zero. Now, in this region 3, you have the dynamics led by a complex quark. I'm not plotting all the spatial eigenvalues. There are infinite numbers of spatial eigenvalues. I'm just plotting the ones that with the smaller real path. In region 3, we have a complex quarter. We are going to have oscillatory pairs in the front. We are going to have localized structure. When you cross this line, forget for, for one second the dashed one. When you cross this line, you encounter the modulation of instability, which basically, if you plot the dispersion relation, the temporal dispersion relation, what you have is that in this region, it has this shape, it touches here, and the modulation is to be, and then it becomes positive after that. So, if you look at what happens with the spatial eigenvalues, is that touch and then they become four taken values on top of the imaginary axis. Okay? Basically, this four taken values corresponds to this four zeros here of the dispersion duration in time, but only rules at the imaginary axis. So, here they have oscillatory tails, here the homogeneous state is going to be unstable because of a modulation of instability. And it's unstable to with perturbations within this range. This and the other. Now, if you go from 7 to 3, from region 7 to region 3, and the number who could become clear, I don't know if we have time, but the numbers are because of a reason, is 7 because of a reason, but that's, that's, I, may not, I may not get there, but anyway. Uh, then you have two real dopewaves. In this region, you see, you have two real dopewaves. They collide. This, this pair collides, and in this point, and then after they collide in this way, they separate in the perpendicular direction, and you get the complex one. Okay? This transition is a Beladayev Devane transition. Beladayev Devane transition, sorry. And the Yakov the money transition is not a bifurcation because there is no real, there is no eigenvalue that causes the imaginary axis. It's not a real, it's, it's a real, it's not a real transition, a bifurcation. But, but, but nevertheless, it is important because in here, the dynamics is dominated by a real dope one. And in here by a complex quarter. So when crossing the BD line, which is not a bifurcation, but it's a transition. Forms go from being monotonic to being uh, oscillatory. Okay? Now, I would like to say one thing. Go back. If you look at gamma tilde of u, the gamma written in terms of u, remember u equal to k squared, which is minus lambda squared. Okay? The modulation of instability, I told you, is a double zero of the gamma of u. Okay? Two zero of gamma u collide. That's what the system is. The Velayakov Devane transition is also two zeros of gamma u colliding. Exactly the same. The only difference is that in the modulation instability where they collide is for a positive, they collide on the real axis for a positive value of u. And here they collide for a negative value of u. So basically, what I'm saying is that the modulation instability and the <coughs> transition are exactly the same. Are basically correspond to two parts of the same manifold. Correspond to the two parts of the manifold in which gamma of u has a double z. That's why this line is a smooth. And it has to be that way. There is a point in here, so basically what you have is you have a double zero of gamma of u here, 
a real double zero of gamma of u here, and a real double zero of gamma of u here, this one happens for value of u positive, the other for values of u negative, and in here, in this point, QZ, you have a double zero of gamma of u at u equals zero. And there, the modulation stability becomes a very act of the value. And this point, the quadruple of zero, the point here in the middle, is called quadruple of zero because in the dispersion relation written in terms of k is the quadruple of zero of that. And it has been studied, you can just look at this uh, book, uh, this article by uh, De Manet or by Chan, De Manet introduces the, 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 the transition, by Chamis, who studied in detail in this physically this point. Also, the book by Mariana uh, Aragus and, and George Ios, uh, this, which is written here, has a, a good description of this point from a mathematical point of view. Okay, so this is all organized by this QZ point. This QZ point has also other lines coming out of this, and for instance, the transition from 7 to 1 here, you have one of these doublets here, the real doublet, collides the origin, and then it becomes an imaginary doublet. This is an Call an homogeneous, this, this is an homogeneous instability, but technically it's a Hamiltonian pitch for rever, or a reversible attack on Montano, or an O2 plus bifurcation. Those are the names. But anyway, those are technical names. Basically, what happens is the dispersion relation crosses at the origin. Okay? The transition from 2 to 1 is also is a similar one than here, but what happens here is that Again, we have two eigenvalues, imaginary double, uh, colliding at zero, and then leading to real uh, eigenvalues. It's very similar. It's, uh, it's called Hamiltonian pitch for Hof, or reversible tackle for Danos Hof, or O2 of I omega. And in this one, in this one here, the homogeneous state here is stable and becomes unstable here. In here, the homogeneous state is already unstable. In here, the homogeneous state is already unstable. And when it goes to this region, it remains unstable. So basically, in region 2, it's unstable already the homogeneous state at these wave vectors. When you cross this bifurcation, it becomes unstable to a larger range of wave <coughs> But anyway, it's unstable. In terms of gamma of u, gamma theta of u, all these bifurcations are never double zeros as they are single zeros at the origin. One can calculate analytically the location of these points. Again, you linearize around the, the homogeneous steady state. You find the double zeros of terms of gamma of gamma and gamma theta of u is equal to zero. So you just draw these equations. And you can isolate it from here mu and you get the shape of this one. You can do the same if you do a moment expansion. Remember the moment expansion that I introduced later on? So if you do a moment expansion up to order 4, what you obtain is these dashed lines that are written here. That I, I told you to forget for a while. Now... But, but to order 4, you mean only k to the 4? This so, so qualitatively, you get the same thing with the four corner derivative that only we call this. Yes. If you have time, I'm going to show another diagram that is not exactly like this. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, and then when you have evaluated this, you can call, you can evaluate the location of the quadruple zero, which is basically a loop in here, where. Uh, u sub z is zero. So in this point where u sub z is zero, you have to solve this. Or you can look directly here. So just plot u sub z equals zero here and solve these two equations, which is a double zero for u equals zero, and you get immediately that the quadruple zero must be located at mu equals zero, and s must be minus two times single square. Okay? So this will give you where you have to look in phase space, in parameter space, sorry, for uh, the existence of localized structures or not. Uh, this is, for instance, all the. This is a, another view of the same diagram. 
This is plot for different values of mu, s versus sigma. Here's a mu equals zero, this is the QZ. So from here it unfolds uh, the, the layak of Devane and a modulation of instability lines as you decrease mu prime, which is this, and in this region three is where you can have localized structures. Those are the all the eigenvalues, and you have that there are many of them, and they, here there is a real copper, uh, a real this is this point that this one here, so in here you have a real doublet always. In here, when you go this, this, you have from a real doublet, now you have a complex quartet here, and here, like doublets, so here, the major state is in a state. Uh, you see the shape of the front in here and here. Here the front is monotonous. As soon as you cross the, 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 the transition line, you get a uh, front with a similar details. Which means that what kind of structure to exist. Now, I'm not going to have all the time to explain this, but just because to show you that there is more light after the fourth of that expansion, let me show you a kernel which is not, not definite positive. A kernel with positive and negative parts. Okay? Which is the Mexican cat kernel. So, kernels with attractive and repulsive parts were introduced in neuroscience. Okay? And here I've got some references and have been also used in reaction diffusion and in optical systems. Okay? This paper, by the way, is by the group of Houston. So, uh, they use different, different so shapes of kernels with positive and negative parts, but the easiest one to, to put it is this Mexican hat, which is two Gaussians, basically. Okay, this is one of the simplest that, that, that has that inside, of negative and uh, positive parts. Attractive and repulsive, non work of both of them, non work Again, you can write down the dispersion relation. You can find the, 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 the double zero manifold for, uh, the, for real, real zeros of gamma of u, which is given by this. And you can solve that. And now you have the location of the mu uh, double zero, which depends on these uh, lambda functions. There are two branches of the lambda function which are real, double ul, one and zero. So there are two possible solutions for this mu prime corresponding to L equals 0 and L equals 1. And there is a parameter here in this kernel, besides the width, which is B, and B gives you the balance between the attractive and the repulsive part. Okay? This is the shape of the kernel for P equals 0 0.5, and let's see what happens for different values of P. Well, this diagram is not exactly the same than before. Okay? You might recognize a few parts of it. Okay, this is the quadruple zero point, this is the modulation instability, this is the layout of the one transition, but there are many other ones, which I'm not going to enter in detail. <laughs> okay? But, what I'm going to emphasize is the following. Remember that before, the, the region 3, where the one determining the vocalized, the vocalized structure, was determined by this line and this line, and those lines continued forever. Now this line ends at something which is a cusp. And another line starts there. And it's continued by this strange line here, which I call XR. This XR is not a bifurcation, it's made after transition. Is not signaled by the cohesion of any alien values. Is a crossover. Basically, what happens is that in region 3, the leading alien values are a complex quarter, and then they might be a real double farther away. When you approach this line, the real double goes to the core, approaches the origin. And when you cross this line, the real dopamine is closer to the origin than the complex quarter. 
Here, dynamics is dominated by the, by the complex quarter, so you have the, uh, oscillatory tails. Here, it is dominated by the real Doppler, so you have monotonic flux. So you go from one to the other to this. This does not unfold from the QZ point. It unfolds from a new point, which is this particular cast, which is not a typical cast because a cast usually is involved at a third order disper uh, dispersion. This is a sixth order dispersion to, to account for that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a reversible cast. Uh, there is also new, another point, this three is it, which I'm not going either to discuss. And what I'm going to say is that look at what happens. That remember that for the for the for the kernel, for the Gaussian kernel, I had to have S negative to have um, localized structures. Because basically the non-local term compensates the local one. Local one. Here I can have another region dominated by a compressed water for positive S, which arises in this region. If you change a little bit B, this B is 0 0.1, and you go to B 0 0.2, the profile changes. This point moves towards here, and it collides with the QZ. And this is a new point called, well, we call 6 to 0, okay, is the one that unfolds everything. Including the quadruple zero, the cost, and all the, all that. Okay? So the next two zero is located at this parameter region. And in here, the region three is delimited by a modulation of instability and the cross out. And if you keep changing the parameters, okay, now the QZ is another sort of QZ, which I'm not going to enter because this is a QZ different from the one. But nevertheless, there is a region three for positive S and Region 3 does not origin in this QZ because this is a sort of the QZ with the reverse sign. It cannot, it cannot originate uh, region 3. The region 3, it is in between a crossover and a modulation instability which arises from a new point which is 3DZ. Three, three and there is also region 3 here. Okay, this is not by no means in a quadratic expansion or for the expansion of the gamma. And you can continue for the parameters and you have now a QZ that appears at the other side and now you have a region 3 here of positive S which is similar to the one that you had before at that side of S. So now it's for positive S. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to I'm going to discuss in detail all that. I'm going just to give some concluding remarks. And basically, is that the special dynamics allows us to determine the regions in parameter space where fronts have oscillatory tails, and so where localized structures can exist. And oscillatory tails are associated to a special dynamics being read by a complex by a complex quark. Okay. Or something that I have not discussed in detail, if the real part, pair is complex, is close to a complex quarter, the, intera the, 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 um, the interaction of both can also be uh, oscillatory. But uh, now there are three transitions that bring into the region where one has a complex quarter within the dynamics. One is the modulation of instability. The other one is the Royak of the Manet transition, and the final one is a cross up. So the bar, the, the, the bars do not collide, they just move in the space. The overall scenario is organized by a, sex, by a quadrimension three point, which is sex to pose zero of the dispersion relation. And open questions are well, this is for a single, sorry, this is for a single variable. And now it's just for more than one variable is to be done. <laughs> Kernel with multiple attractive and repulsive regions. One might need more things to analyze that case. And what is completely open 
is forging to me. Spatial dynamics cannot be applied that way. So that's completely a different way. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Well, uh, I understand what you said. It is true that all these potentials start, or all, all, all these kernels are centered at zero. Because if you think of locality or non-locality and quantum system, it would be rather this, this spatial dislocation, right? Uh, I'm not talking about non-locality in quantum systems or, or this sort of thing. I'm talking about what people commonly call non-locality in literature in this context. And all the kernels that people use are of this shape. You can claim that a real non-local kernel would be one that in the special profile is something like this. And maybe... Yes, for example. Could be. Mm -hmm. I have not seen which of that. Well, if you do have that for, for example, for instabilities. No, but not, but not use it in this... Convective instabilities, convective instabilities, for instance, involve a kernel which is of this form. That's not or that's not model like a the two point non locality the two point non locality would be yeah, the, yeah. The but but then but then but that two point non locality is two point is not a spread out. So people usually use non locality in the sense of coping with this spread over a certain width of distance. Which in the end every system is. Which in the end every system is, that's correct. And then depends again like uh, all the systems have correlations at a given time and all that and all the systems have a finite size and that depends on whether what you are looking or the scales that you are looking are of the size of this of this, uh, of this, of this interaction or not if the interaction is narrower than any typical size that you look everything will be wrong if the interaction is of the same size or, or similar to whatever you are looking or larger then you will be not wrong so basically, in literature, most of the non-locality is related to that. It would be interesting to study also these cases. But, but and, and I don't see any particular problem in that. I mean, in principle, the same sort of analysis could be done in those cases. Just use the other kernel, plug it in, look at the spatial dynamics, look at the effects, and that's it. Well, yes, I, I, don't, I think I misunderstood something because when you want, so they really give me a something. No, if you have, you have, proof, you have from connecting a, a statement and a stable solution, that means that at the beginning you might have, let's say, no, no, you, if you have a form connecting a stable and unstable solution, the stable will will come over, will take over the unstable one, and that's it. That's right. If you do it that numerically, <coughs> you put half of the of the variables in one. What makes the, but do, the two solutions exist? So how do you destabilize that? Because you can stay in the unstable solution forever if you don't have noise, for instance. No, 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 no. no. How do you change from the unstable to the stable? No, 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 no. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. This is x. This is a. Mm -hmm. This is zero, and this is s, the stationary square root of the mm -hmm. You have a form like this in the Ginsburg one now. Yeah, yeah, in the space. This solution is a stable? No. 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 This one is stable. Yeah. This solution is a stable. Now, yes. you say, but this solution is a solution of the system. Yes. If it is infinite. If it is not, no. Okay. And here, it is not the same. So, this profile moves as a profile. And we move in this direction. Okay. okay. I have I don't know if it's a suggestion or something to all of the open questions. Um, You've been looking. You've not been looking at that front, as you said. 
Uh, but I can you uh, there's a theory of question is for yeah. no, Well that, perhaps I, but I'm going to say something to that we did with the video long ago. If instead of a Ginsburg Landau you have fourth order derivatives, sí. which is the main effect of your so called normal family, when this no, no, when this move when this from moves, it it uh, leaves a pattern behind. Uh -huh. So probably with what you call non-locality, you would also have this effect. Is that uh, Yeah. And that would be another, perhaps, genetic effect of this. See, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yes. They are, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking at all the effects of no locality. I'm looking at the effects of, on the shape of the frog. If, if the analysis could be applied here. You could do that, and you could look at if this frog approaches monotonously no, or no. Yeah, on this frog. And then no, 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 not, not on this frog. It, it moves and it leaves a pattern. With a well defined periodicity. Yeah, but, but then, if the front has also this. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but the, the stability. It's a very, very yeah, no. I know that one, but what I'm saying is that, what, I, what I'm saying is that, to understand that on the spatial dynamics, the origin of that pattern should be close to the homogeneous steady state, to, to do it linearizing. If not, you have to look for solutions of the spatial equation which are not linearized around the homogeneous system. Okay? You could do it, but that, then, then you, can, you cannot look at linearization. If the origin of that is an instability in here, then you can look at, you can determine the unstable wave vectors and you might can predict the wave point of the path. But if it is not, if it is from a full non-linear effect of the interaction, then you need to take all the all the time. We have two comments. One is that uh, you say that this uh, will apply to this uh, moving front. I, I'd say it will not because the, when you are assuming that the front is stable. Yes. Then but then, if not, you have to move to the moving front. Yes. And then the yes, that's true. I mean, the, the framework would apply. Then the, but, but one has to add a term which is the velocity of the front and all that. So it's not, it's not exactly, I mean, it, the framework would apply, but you have to add that term. Yeah. Okay, and, and then I say, well, you have been cheating us there. And I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, uh, you start the, the thought, uh, okay, uh, when you have frogs interacting, then there is a, there is an interaction which is attractive or oscillating, and, yes. and then depending if the interaction is, Uh, if the front is, is, is oscillated or not, you can have uh, yeah. localization structures or not. This, this is shown for uh, partial differential equations. Yes. And in partial differential equations, you determine whether the interaction yes. is oscillated or not by some linearization that is what yes. you have to use. Yes. But then you jump to, to the integral differential equations, to, to, the, to the world of non-locality, and then without demonstrating that the, that the, the interaction of the fronts depends on the linearization, you linearize And you, and you assume that we believe that the interaction between frosts is determined by this. No, 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 no. I do not, I do not claim, I have not shown the form of the interaction of the form. I have shown the form of the form. But, and then, the, 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 the shape of the form. Do you know if this determines whether there will be... Uh, no, I have not proved that. And in the one, there is indication in one sense in the sense that all the predictions that we do with analytical question of all these lines, you go in the computer, you put in the numerical simulation with everything, and work. Okay, so it could be interesting. Other than that, that, that the interaction depends on this linearization. As in, no, no, no. The interaction does not depend on the linearization. The linearization predicts if the phone is going to be oscillatory or not. And then, Now, and now, the fact that it's oscillatory or not is what determines the interaction is something to which, something that cannot be done. This is something that cannot be done on this framework. What I'm predicting is, is, is but it is, a, but is what you could expect. Okay? It's what, typically what you could expect. But this is, this is something different. Damien wants to add something. I have two things. Uh, we did, we have a bit of that. But, but we don't demonstrate the mathematical identity. Yeah, well, we find it, but we don't demonstrate yeah, it. Numerical identity uh, numerical identity is not the demonstration. Numerical identity is false. And then we had a... Uh, um, numerical identity? Yeah. We had a, um, a replay by another group saying that that was not true. That yeah. In case of non-locality, you can have other type of interactions and so on. 
So the full proof that that is in the way is not, but, but it, it works. There is a paper claiming that if the kernel does not decay exponentially, the scale is lower than exponentially, the interaction changes. And it has no shape. But, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's not. But that's a claim, maybe I have for proof. No, well, they say it's proof, but. Yeah. You agree with the proof? And, uh, and then I have another comment on what Max is coming on the time about the non locality or expansion. In, because Claire is also cheating here, so. Ah. <laughs> for the first part, for the exponential, you can truncate that fourth order and you say three hats. Then they say, okay, but then when you get the Mexican hat, you can knock it up to four order. But you can have it at eight order. Six, so, six order. Six order. Six order. Six order. So you truncate that six order, you get all which is in the, in the Mexican hat. But this is not the business of the fraction of the liberty. No 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 no. no, 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 no. Well, no. my point is that if you actually, I have not found so far any effect that is in the, in the, which is in a, in a non-local, fully non-local kernel, which is not in a yeah. truncation. So all of this, all, it is always on the truncation. Yeah. Nevertheless, we got a comment from a, from a referee from the, from the uh, ecological side, saying that he understands the non-local kernel, but that which is the, um, which is You can, he understands the full kernel, you can truncate and not explain everything, but nevertheless the physical, let's say the physical origin of that time is the full normal. Well, let me say one thing, one, one so, thing. Well, let, me say, let me say one thing. It is true that this point, for instance, will fall from a truncation to six exactly. so but, but if you do that, you don't get this. Yeah, yeah, this is probably eight. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 this is what I'm going to get. So you think that's full normal? No, you are not going to write an equation which has a given, because here, the, 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 some, it turns out that the place you have to truncate depends on the sign of S. Ah, yeah, well, you're doing that wrong so way. there is no truncation which is valid both for positive and negative S. Okay, okay, okay. You, have you can reproduce parts of it, okay? You can reproduce this part, that other part, truncating here, there, and so on. Not the full scenario. No. So the full scenario will be a property of the full and all the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if if, the, if if it is simple, if it is simple like the Gaussian, if, if the scenario is simple like uh, what happens here? Uh, if the scenario is simple like in the case of the Gaussian, the relevant part. If the scenario is simple like in here, and nothing happened here, okay, then you can do something here, truncate here, and since there is nothing here to be described, it's okay. But if the scenario is much richer, involving positive and negative co uh, air, no, no localities, then you either have the full uh, system of that the truncation for large k will go as a k to the maximum power. Okay, so with a coefficient. So, an S, and that's a, that's a, a typical a typical problem. While for the no, while for the, the 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 real kernel, whatever you do it at large case, the kernel should go to zero. Okay. No, no matter what non-local coupling you have, you do not expect that the coupling diverges for our scale. Because it's uh, the same point. It's basically anything wrong with it. So it's so truncations are particular. And for the Lorentzian, for example, for instance, that the kernel in Fourier space. Kernel. The Lorentzian, Lorentzian, sorry, for the exponential kernel which in Fourier space is a Lorentzian, the Lorentzian has a pole in the complex point. Then a series expansion is valid until you reach the point, the pole. And when you hit the pole, for a given value of k or whatever, you are dead. You mentioned it. Uh, in, in, the, in the distinction of the two uh, uh, kernels that you showed, one was monotonic, one was non-monotonic. 
Can you classify certain phenomena just because of the yeah. consciousness? Yes, the yes, yes. This, this is a scenario general. I expect this is a scenario to be general for all monotonous For non-monotonous. For mono, for mono this, no, this one is a problem. For monotonic kernels, I expect everything to be organized by a good data problem. We're part of this. Yes, rather similar, or a uh, region 3 organized by a quadruple zero point, uh, which is the same that it happens, for instance, in the sweet Hochenberg equation, for instance. And, and uh, the position of the lines can change a little bit, but everything will be organized in this form. And this whole thing is. As soon as you have kernels which are non monotonic, then, then you, need, you need to go to, to a larger scenario. And, At the park and, as it, if you've got many, many of them, then you might need more things. But that's even more common. Okay, I think it's already a long discussion.